Hello again. Waterstones, the chain of bookshops with which I am sure most viewers are familiar, has become embroiled in what is seen by some as a racist incident, but by normal people as a ridiculous fuss about nothing. The story was reported this morning in the Sunday Telegraph and it's also covered by the uh, magazine the Bookseller, which I read because of course I write books for a living. Just for some background, I'm the author of more than 50 westerns and also dozens of non-fiction books. These range from a guidebook to Kingston upon Thames to a study of information and communication technology between 1900 and 1914 and there's books about the Essex town of Colchester, of slavery, all sorts of different things really. I mention this not to boast but just to explain the background to the fuss which has erupted about the treatment of a black author called Derek Owusu by a branch of Waterstones near Covent Garden in London. What happened was that Derek Owusu, who has written an autobiographical novel about the experience of being a black person in Britain, walked into a bookshop which was selling his book and asked if he could sign some of the copies on display. The shop assistant to whom he made this request asked if he could show that he really was the author of the book by producing some kind of ID. Now, I have to say at once that this sounds like a really weird thing for any author to do. Because I've written so many books, it's rare for me to visit a bookshop in London which doesn't stock at least one of them. Have I ever felt tempted to ask a shop assistant if I can sign any of these books? Of course not. That would, apart from anything else, be colossally sad. I have never in my life heard of an author doing such a thing. Sure, I've been invited to shops in the past to do signings from time to time, but I certainly can't imagine just walking off the street into some random shop and making an offer of this kind. If I did, then I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if I was asked to prove I really was the author of the books I was offering to scribble in. After all, sometimes strange people do things like that to make themselves feel important. Anybody can claim to be an author and to sign books in a bookshop. This, then, is a classic example of the drip feed of stories which are designed to make people think that we live in a racist society. This story ended up first in the bookseller, then in the Sunday Telegraph. I'm sure it will appear in other newspapers over the next few days. I give links to news items about it in the description to this video and the thumbnail to the video shows um, the author in question, Derek Wooster. We see that Waterstones has been abasing itself by saying things like, we are incredulous and dismayed that any bookseller would ask an author for their ID when they have offered to sign their books. And also, that Derek Awusu was asked for his ID is wholly inappropriate and discourteous in the extreme. It was the action of an individual bookseller acting completely contrary to our expectation of professional bookselling. We apologise sincerely and are deeply embarrassed that this has happened. Another black author has pitched in and said that he too had the same experience when he turned up unannounced at some bookshop and offered to sign copies of his books. An ethnic minority publisher says that, as an agent and publisher, having the confidence that booksellers and retailers will approach their jobs with complete unbiased and an anti-racist or classist approach is crucial to me, believing in this industry. Unfortunately, once again, my belief in the industry has been shaken. Bookshops should be a safe space for all to feel welcome and included, especially for authors who are the heart and soul of what we all do and the lifeline to so many readers. <laughs> I've never in all my life heard such rubbish. I've never found any bookshop to be anything other than a safe space and I honestly can't understand how 
being asked for your ID if you claim to be a, an author could possibly make a place seem unsafe. This has <coughs> nothing at all to do with race and everything to do with people not understanding the conventions of the publishing and bookselling trades. Here are two questions that I'd like viewers to consider. The first is this. I am, to be blunt, a strange looking old gimp. If I entered a random bookshop which contained copies of, say, The Forgotten Slave Trade, a popular book which I've written, and asked if I could sign these copies which they held, would they just say, go ahead and hand me a pen? Obviously not. They would first check with the manager and then ask me for evidence and I'm not just some crank masquerading as a writer. You know, some old guy at a loose end who just wants to stay in the bookshop and perhaps attract attention to himself. This has nothing at all to do with race or racism. It's simply common sense. The second question is, suppose that I did this very strange thing and was asked for identification. Would Waterstones then publish a grovelling apology and would other authors leap into the fray? No, because everybody would regard it as a bit of embarrassing behaviour by a strange old man. This had only appeared in newspapers because the strange person in this case happened to be black. Come to think of it, how did this even get in the papers in the first place? Who rang up the book set from the Sunday Telegraph? Why did they do so? I can think of two possible explanations. The first is that Derek Wusu simply does not know how authors, publishers and bookshops usually carry on. And it was a simple misunderstanding which he chose to interpret as an act of racism. The second and more cynical explanation might be that he saw the sales of his books were falling and thought that playing the race card might boost sales. In other words, he might have gone into a shop and done this in the hope of being asked questions just so that he could then go beetling off to the papers with accusations of racism against him. My money would probably be on this as the correct reason for seeing this peculiar incident in the morning paper, but I might be wrong. This is how the perception is created, little by little, that we live in a racist society and that all the cards are stacked against black people. I don't believe that this is so for a moment. Many of the cases of supposed systemic or institutional racism turn out on closer examination to be just like this one, where a black person behaves in such a way as would cause eyebrows to be raised if the person was white. And as soon as those eyebrows do go up, then we are told that this is a microaggression.